Welcome to Art Business with Ness. I'm Ness and I'm a professional illustrator. Today is a big day. I'm so excited to announce that I'm launching a brand new membership club called the Sketchbook Camp. As the name implies, it's all about sketchbooks. There will be monthly projects for you, tips, process videos, the works. And right now you can actually get in for free. Yay! <laughs> I will give more details at the end of this video, so make sure to stay until the end to know how you can get one month free of Sketchbook Camp, no strings attached. To celebrate the launch of Sketchbook Camp, today I wanted to talk to you about my own sketchbook journey, what I learned along throughout the years and, you know, everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So without any further ado, go like, comment, subscribe, all the youtube things, and let's just jump right into it. My journey starts in the faraway land of Canada. Like many of us, I always loved drawing and coloring since I was very young. I wasn't very good at it to begin with, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. I started keeping a sketchbook at 9, and this is it right here. <laughs> the, <laughs> the cover is not attached anymore, it's very old. This is the first page here. <laughs> I had an attitude. At that time, I was mostly doodling either in HB pencil or some coloring pencils, Crayola markers. I have lost most of my sketchbooks from that time, but I still have this one. In high school, I discovered manga and anime like many of us at that time, and I was completely smitten in love. I copied a lot of manga panels or anime screenshots in my sketchbook trying to learn the style. This really inspired me and I started to draw a lot more around this time. I was also quite poor growing up, so I would just sketch with whatever I could find. Pencils, Crayola markers, blue ball pens, highlighters. At that time, I used to remove pages that I didn't like and throw them out, which is why some of these sketchbooks are very thin. And I really regret doing that now because I lost a lot of sketches from that time. At that time, I couldn't bear to see these ugly sketches, but now I wish I still had them. So that's why it's important to keep your ugly sketches. One day you might want to see them again. Then came college and I enrolled in visual arts at first. In school, I started doing a lot of live drawing sessions. I filled countless sketchbooks with those. I was learning a lot and experimenting with new techniques and media in school but I still had a big anime influence to everything I was doing. During that time, I had these two little tiny sketchbooks that I kept around with me. Lots of fun stuff in here. After two years in visual arts, I decided to switch my major and I started 2D animation instead. There were a lot of new fun projects and around this time I started using these manila paper pads. They were cheap at the college store and I filled so many of these. Around this time, I also started being unsatisfied with my anime style. I wanted to draw differently, but I wasn't sure how to go about that. I started experimenting a lot with different things, trying to find a new style. After I graduated college with my 2D animation degree, I started working in a mobile game studio. And this was a 9 to 5, so suddenly I had a lot more free time <laughs> in the evenings and on the weekends. These are the main two sketchbooks that I used during this time. The artwork that I was doing for work was very strict and had to follow a specific brief so in those sketchbooks i had a lot more fun and i did whatever i wanted Around this time, I also started a webcomic with my boyfriend. He wrote it and I drew it. These are some characters from that project. A few years later, in 2018, I left my studio job and started freelancing full-time. And that's when things became really busy for me because I went in 
without really any safety net, without established clients or anything like that. I just quit my job without a plan and I had to make it work. I had to figure it out. I really wouldn't recommend doing that because I burned myself out so bad. I tried everything under the sun to see what would work and <laughs> I had bills to pay. So I was working like rent was due because it was. I had to quit my webcomic and for the first time, I started pushing my sketchbook aside. Slowly, little by little, I started doing less and less in it. I still have a few sketches for fun from that time, mostly digital sketches because I really didn't do much during that time. It was a really stressful and busy time and I wasn't really sketching for fun a whole lot. By 2020, when I started this YouTube channel, Art Business Witness, things got even more busy and at that time, I stopped my sketchbook practice completely. I told myself I didn't need it anymore. I was a professional artist and I had everything figured out. I convinced myself that I was past it because it was a way to justify not spending that time anymore. But over the last few years, I've realized, first of all, I've missed it so much. Sketching is really fun and it's been such a huge part of my life for so long, since I was nine. On top of that, I've noticed that I've become really reliant on digital features like Control Z or the resize feature in Photoshop. And I have trouble with my dexterity now drawing on paper is a lot more difficult than it used to be my basic skills like speed and dexterity have decreased dramatically because i don't keep up the sketchbook practice anymore i also lost a lot of my creativity and my joy for drawing because i don't just draw for fun and experiment anymore every time that i draw it's for a specific project it's for a specific purpose and that's just not as fun so I've realized just how important the sketchbook is and how much I've missed it. Recently, I finally finished the Art Business Bootcamp, my signature program that I've been building for the past two years. And with a bit more time on my hands for the first time in years, the first thing that I wanted to do with it was start up my sketchbook practice again. I created Sketchbook Camp because I wanted to take you all on this journey with me. I wanted to share with you the projects that I'm going to be doing in my sketchbook and I want us, all of us to hang together, draw together, encourage each other, and just grow together. In the last month, I've started three new sketchbooks. This is the first one of the three. This is my new dry media sketchbook. I've used it so far to take some notes about hand lettering classes that I've been taking on Domestica and practice drawing the letters in here. There's also a few sketches for a sketchbook camp project in here, so I can't show you that just yet. <laughs> Then I also started this one, my new wet media sketchbook. I keep this one just for wet media projects like watercolor, gouache, and other wet media. This is because this paper is thicker and more expensive. So I don't wanna waste any of the pages in here just for pencil sketches. I can do that in my other cheaper dry media sketchbook. There are also sketchbook cam projects in here, so I can show you, it's a surprise. You're gonna have to sign up for free to go inside sketchbook camp and see those. And lastly, I also started this sketchbook just for brainstorming ideas for my surface design business. So now whenever I have an idea for an illustration, a pattern or a theme, or a whole collection, I just jot them down in here. I draw exclusively in ink in here to keep it quick so I don't start fussing over the details or erasing. These are just thumbnails or ideas, not pretty drawing. I already love having this sketchbook so, so much. It's my new favorite one. And I know that it will be so helpful to have this around whenever I have to start and work on a new collection. I'm just gonna be able to go in here and check my bank of ideas ready to do. So this was my sketchbook journey so far and where I am right now with my practice. I'm so glad that I started up again. I only started up about a month ago, but already I can see that my skills have improved and I've gathered so many new ideas for future projects and future collections. It's been so much fun. Like I said, there's so many benefits to having a consistent sketchbook practice. But as we know, there can be obstacles too, like lack of inspiration, sketchbook fear, or lack of time, like how it was for me. And that's where a membership like Sketchbook Camp can help so much by providing structure, specific projects that we can do together, inspiration, motivation, and community support. Over there, I will share projects that we can do together along with the full-length process videos, tips, 
recommended material, additional classes, and even feedback sessions. The works. And as I said before, my surprise for you today is that I've decided to make the first month free for all of you to join and come have fun with me. I will leave the link to that in the description below. So go click on it and come join me so we can all start filling our sketchbooks together. After the free month is over, if you wish, you will be able to stay as a regular member for $15 per month, but that's up to you. There are no strings attached for the free month and you can cancel anytime you wish. I just wanted everyone to be able to try it out and test it out for free so we can all have fun in June. And if this sounds fun to you, then go in the description and follow the link to sign up for free. You only have until June 15th to sign up for the free month, so hurry up and don't miss it. There's already a first sketchbook project for you waiting in there as well as additional videos on recommended art supplies. I hope to see you there. But until then, that's it for me today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to help our small channel grow. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.